Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Um, now today I'm just going to do a little short video about buzzing turntables and it seems to be something I think people have forgotten that turntables are actually little, sort of almost like little aerials. They do pick up a lot of sort of external noise and they are a little bit fussy because the, the signal from a record player is, is tiny compared to everything else. So if there's any background RF noise or anything like that, they do tend to pick it up and amplify it. Well, when it's amplified, it's amplified a lot more. So you tend to, the background noise is amplified a lot more as well. So you, you have to be quite careful with placement and this and that. What I've noticed is a lot, because I get a lot of phone calls, and I think this is the part of the reason for the video really, is a lot of people sort of, oh, I've got a buzzing turntable. I've been on a forum, they've told me to, I need to, I need to run an earth. Um, and I think, I think that that's the sort of logical thought is, oh, if it's buzzing, it must need an earth, but it rarely is. It's really unusual. Um, and the buzzing, can, the buzzing can be an earth issue, but it's, it is, like I say, it is quite rare. So what I'm going to do is just try and show, it's not going to be easy to show, I'm going to try and show um, a few sort of scenarios and the, the noise that you would, the turntable, the noise that you get through the speakers in, in certain situations. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Um, apologies for the kind of radical, I just had my hair cut and it's kind of a bit radical to see myself in the, uh, in the display and it's, um, yeah. <laughs> A bit radical. Um, yeah, so I'll turn the camera around and we'll just go through a few a, a few possibilities of what, what, what noises can be and how to recognise them, because this is the thing I've been having, is people ringing up saying, turntable's buzzing, and I'm saying, well, what sort of buzz is it? And it's actually quite a difficult conversation to have, because it's I'm familiar with the different noises, but obviously difficult to explain over the phone. So what I'm going to do is just run through a few possible noises that, turn, that can result from turntables either being in the wrong place or not being earthed or... So it's just to make it easier to recognise them. So here we go. Okay, so what I've done done here is I've just wired in, uh, especially a full Riga system, just happens to be, <laughs> not for any particular reason, Riga, so Riga 3, an LX amplifier, and a pair of RX1 Riga speakers. Um, to put this really close up to it, you wouldn't normally put speaker in that situation, but it's just so the microphone can pick any, pick any noises up. Um, so yeah, so you set up your, you say you've got a new turntable, your new amplifier, and you go to turn up the volume, and let's try and do it from over here so you can hear. Turn up the volume and it's humming. Um, that's quite an annoying noise that you wouldn't, wouldn't really want in the background. I mean it's, to be honest, the volume is quite a way up, so it's, you know, it, it, it becomes more apparent, it's probably down normal listening levels, it's kind of there in the background, but it's not what you want. Uh, and this is actually quite a simple fix because what this is is it's a proximity effect. What we've done here, we've put the turntable on the left, amplifier on the right. In the amplifier, the transformer is here, and obviously the tone arm is here. Uh, arm leads and everything are all are all down this side. So the distance from here to here is, is actually really sh short. So all 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 the because transformers do kick out quite a lot of noise. Um, Sort of th through through the air and in you know all over the place really. They're, they're actually quite noisy devices, so you don't really want one of those, particularly close to anything. And a simple thing with this actually, if I can try and do this without falling over, if I move the deck away, we can still hear a, back a bit of background hiss because the phono stages do have a bit of background hiss, but the hum is pretty much gone. And I've moved the deck by that much. Um, easy solution to this, which will make it even quieter actually, and the way the way to do it would be, and I'll just I'll just stop the camera and I'll um, show you what I mean. Right, so simple solution is I've just turned them around, because so now the transformer is up this end, turn arm is up that end, and it just, you know, that sort of distance means that we're now fairly well noise free. Well, there's a, you do quite often get a bit of background noise with record players, but it's it's just little things like this will just take the, the main noises you can get rid of really. Um, so that's proximity noise, so that's the noise of a transformer, so that's quite a low, quite a low sort of hum that you get from that. Um, I've got to show you an earthing hum. Now I can't show it on a, a modern Riga because modern Rigas are earthed down the negative field. They have a really good earth system. Um, like I say, if you go on forums they'll say, oh you need an extra earth, and people get very upset with Rigas because Rigas don't have a visible earth. Uh, they are actually earthed, like I say, down the negative, I think it's the left negative, right, right negative? I can't remember. Um, earthed down the negative and it's so it earths via the amplifier's sort of ground, really. Um, 
and that works really well. You don't have any problems with it. I don't think I've really ever had any problems with Riga's earthing wires apart from the earlier ones, which is what I'm just going to swap for now. Uh, so we can actually show you what um, what an earth fault sounds like. Okay, so I'll swap the turntable. This is a, a 1980s, because it's pre-83s, because it's got the, the old S-shaped R200 ACOS arm on it. Uh, now that has a separate earth, so we can actually we can actually try it. This is connected up without the earth. So it's, it's a sort of high, slightly higher pitch. Probably won't come across on the speakers very well, nice, but there's a sort of high, high sort of frequency buzz from it. I don't think it's better down there. Uh, and a lower hum as well, so it's a bit of a combination of noises. Really. Again, volume is quite a way up. And both both of these situations, you'll find um, that the music will still play, but you've got the this buzz behind it. Um, if there isn't any sound on the channel, I'll, I'll show you what I'll show you how that sounds as well because that's that's fairly easy to easy to recreate. So I'll just turn the volume down, touch the earth, which is a little tag at the back here. Oh, the other thing actually with uh, with earth issues, I'll just show you that uh, it's quite easy to tell sometimes if it is an earthing fault because when you touch the toner, it's actually I just jumped over there. It's actually earth kind of trying to earth through me through my body there. So. Um, it's trying to find its trying to find its way to, way to earth somehow. So let's put it in. And the other thing you have to say, if you do have noise, you just I mean, um, routing of cables is quite important. I must admit, because this is just like a demonstration room, the cabling in here is a bit is a bit haphazard. Really, it shouldn't be, but it it just tends to get that way. Occasionally, I have a little clear out and straighten everything up because you don't you don't really want mains cables crossing over interconnects and. Speed cable or something because that can create noise. Um, if you do need to cross them, or following along with each other anyway, if you do have to cross them across, try and do it at 90 degrees because that's sort of the minim minimal amount. Um, so, yeah, so now we've got. There you go, that's fairly quiet now. So, um, so that's that's the earthing sort of noise, which, like I say, you, you will get with it. Most, most turntables have separate earth. Uh, later Rigas don't have this. Like I say, this is an early one, so it does have a, a separate earth. Later, later decks, whatever you, re you hear on forums or you know the, whatever advice you see on there, it, for, for the later Rigas, it, it's, it's wrong. You don't need to add another earth because they are earth, and there's never any problems with earth. It's more than likely like the first problem of a proximity effect from a transformer or the various other things. But I'll, I'll try and recreate some of the other things, but it's actually quite hard to do. So I'll, I'll see what I'll see what I can do in a minute, actually. Might have to move rooms. Um, so yeah, so nice and quiet now, earth attached. But again, this turntable will do the same thing if, you, if we swapped over left to right and had the transformer right next to it. This would pick up in the same way. It's nothing to do with earth, that is proximity. Um, so let's just have a go and see if we can uh, recreate a dead channel. Uh, the, uh, a noise from a, from a break in the arm, which is it would create a dead channel and a hum as well. So we'll, we'll do that. Okay, so back on back onto the sort of modern planar three. Uh, now, now what I've done, I've recreated um, a fault in the arm. So I've taken off. Let's just see, I've taken off the red tag there. So um, right channel positive on this is now is now dead. And what that sounds like through the amplifier is is quite noticeable. It's hardly it's much lower volumes than they were before, actually. Um, so the difference here is that so we're getting the that's sort of noise. It's a, again a deeper noise from from that. Um, the channel that's broken doesn't doesn't work. You just get the hum. So if you've got a hum and signal coming through, it isn't a break. But if you get the hum and nothing coming through, it is a break. So that's yeah, that's a way to sort of di diagnose that. Um, see, that's what that one. Um, just trying to work out how to do another proximity effect, really, because the it's not just the, the equipment itself that can create noise. There's other household things. The biggest problem nowadays, actually, is things like um, Wi-Fi routers and that sort of thing, um, and they're more more of a high pitch. Well, it's, it's a bit like an earth noise, um, but an earth noise is a bit like a sort of high pitched off tune radio, if you know what that sort of sounds like. Whereas um, the noise, the noise of um, a router is—it sounds 
digital. It's got a sort. It's got a definite resonance in it that you can hear, and it does sound like a digital, like some, something switching noise. Um, it's hard to describe it really, but that, I, I could do with trying to. I, I don't know how I can recreate that. But anyway, I've got. I've just had another idea of recreating something else. So I'll just. Uh, I might have to move rooms now. So I'll uh, have a go at that one. So I've sort of failed on this one. This Normally, in this room, and it seems to be behaving today, normally if I dim the lights, uh, or turn the lights up, and they're actually on a dimmer switch here, which I need to get rid of, to be honest. Um, but they usually, if you take it to a halfway point, um, like that, usually there's so much noise off the, the, the dimmer, you can hear it through the speakers. Um, today, it's totally quiet. Isn't it typical, isn't it? But uh, so it has to be on full, so not going through any sort of resistance or off um, to be quiet. But yeah, like I say today, but that's that's quite a high pitch sort of sound. Um, not a very good impression that really. Uh, it's a bit like it's a bit like an earth sound, but like I say, it's, it's got sort of um, a, dig a digitized sort of sound to it, like a, a, a sort of high pitch resonance rather than a buzz. Really, um, and this, like I say, similar with routers. Uh, I did have a chap who is a really, really high end system actually. I mean, his, his turntable turntable cartridge photo stage would be something around 30, 30 40,000 pounds, and he had a tremendous high pitched buzz on his, on his setup. And we moved stuff around, we changed cables, and we played with stuff, and then eventually, we just I just said to him, just, well, just go around to your house and just switch things off until it stops. And his router was up in an upstairs bedroom and we'd switch the router off, it just went quiet. Um, so he's had to find other means to, uh, to sort of solve that really. But it's, yeah, it was simple as that. It was just putting loads of noise into the mains and his, his, his system was picking it up. So it's not, it's not to do with being badly made or anything like that. It is just the nature of the beast. They do pick stuff up. Um, I mean, modern, modern, in modern times, it's worse than it used to be. But I mean, I remember. Um, oh, I remember I used to work. Put my switch my screen back on again. Switch on. So, um, I used to work in Liverpool years ago, and we one of our Sondex that we had as a Devon demonstrator, we had an SME arm on it, and the SME arm would pick up Radio Russia if the, if if it was bad weather, you know, it's quite overcast and I think it looks low pressure. Um, so it was, it was a weather induced thing. We actually, we used to get uh, Radio Russia on the, on, coming through the speakers and most of the turntables seemed to pick up uh, the taxis because it was near Liverpool city centre. It was, taxis would pull up outside and you could hear both sides of the conversation sometimes even, sometimes one side, sometimes both sides, uh, really clearly, through the, which is a bit unnerving. You sort of, what you think is an empty room and there's voices in there and it's the, the taxis outside being picked up. Uh, it's not just the record player that pick it up, it's, it's anything before um, anything before this, the, the system is, is brought up to line level by the phono stage. So the phono stage itself can pick things up, uh, the arm cable can pick things up, which I think suspect was the Radio Russia thing, I think that was almost acting, physically acting as an aerial. Um, and the turntable itself, the tone arm, fine wiring in the tone arm, the cartridge itself can pick things up. Um, Sometimes, one thing that is quite a common, not quite common, but I suppose as, as noises go, sometimes with record players you'll find as you move the tone arm across, they'll actually pick up their own, the noise of the, the motor. Um, because there's, you know, there's, there's coils and brushes and stuff in there and they, they, they make a bit of RF as well. And sometimes, it, it isn't very consistent. It isn't a case of well, if you put this deck with this cartridge you'll get noise. Um, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's a bit more like my lights actually today, who just haven't performed for me at all. Um, I've noticed Grado cartridges are, seem to be more susceptible to it, and the Riga moving magnets seem to be more susceptible to it. But you'll get this thing where you move the tone arm across, and as it gets towards the motor, you can hear a bit of a sort of low pitched hum going on. My screen's gone off again. Um, this, that, that, that's probably the only one that's difficult to fix. I think. The only way really is probably to change your cartridge, which isn't a great solution, but it's like some aren't that well shielded. Uh, and I think the shielding sort of potentially degrades the sound, I suppose. This is me sort of taking a wild guess. But um, yeah, it does, 
normally it's not normally not an issue. Well, 99% of the time it's not an issue, but occasionally you'll get a bit of bit of noise pick up, and that might be the only only solution to it is to change cartridge. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is useful. I mean, I've failed a little bit in my, in my experiments, but um, was a little bit off the cuff. Just, just sort of let's let's, let's show that. Um, but yeah, the the noise thing is it's 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 a, it's a lot on the forums, and I think people know by now what I think. Is, I don't really like the forums. I think these there's a lot of people who like to like to try, sort of try and sound knowledgeable and take wild guesses at things, and then it becomes it becomes fact. So I think the other thing thing with particularly with return tables has been really overblown. I don't think there's any. I don't know why that's sort of got to the level it has really. Um, so yeah, I'll um, I'll sign off now and hopefully see you in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe. We're, we're heading towards a thousand. Um, I'm wondering about doing a competition for the thousand, but I can't actually think of what sort of competition or what sort of prize, but I'll have a think. I'll give it some thought. Um, see you soon. Thank you very much.